So what we have here is the La Scipio and Grand Ganera, which is 55 by 233 or 9.2 inches. The Vitola de Glare listed as a Diadema, and the common name is Giant Perfecto. This was a pre-1960 release, discontinued in 1980, and the packaging was just a basic cardboard box here with 10 coffins inside with the, each cigar individually wrapped in foil with a paper around it, and then inside the coffin, as you're going to see here in the next uh, frame. So uh, one thing to note on this brand, it was... Basically established in the 1850s, over a decade before Hoya de Monterey, but still considered the sister brand of Hoya de Monterey. So, another thing to note is that this was a pretty powerful, no-nonsense brand. Uh, if you read the MRN book, there's one of the cigars in here that's considered one of the most powerful Cuban cigars that was ever released, according to the MRN book. And it just makes me wonder that if they were blending cigars in Cuba like they were back then, before this brand was discontinued in 1989, I would think that there would be a lot of New World smokers that are smoking Liga Pravada, Opus X, and Padron that would really enjoy these cigars. That's just me. So here we are a little bit closer to this cigar, and I would like you to take note on the right side of the book there. There's two different bands for this Diadema. One is the band that you can see predominantly right there, which is the older band. And then there's the newer band that my hand is covering up, which you'll be able to see in just a second, which is the, like, kind of patterned after the newer the Hoya de Monterey band if you can see right there so anyway <clears throat> just so uh, you know that there's two different bands this cigar is going to have the older band that you can see there in the picture and as you can see it's got this sliding uh, lid that over the top of the coffin and then you have a, a cedar spill that has that uh, you know that burn in uh, emblem of um, La Cepcion in there and now we get to the cigar which is wrapped in that uh, aluminum foil with the stars on it, which is kind of interesting, kind of nice looking, a little bit of bling there, along with that older uh, La Cepcion band around it. <clears throat> so we'll get it out of the coffin here. And like I said earlier, this, this brand was considered a pretty strong brand of cigar, very powerful and very no-nonsense, basically notes of tobacco and pepper. <clears throat> were kind of the basic notes in this cigar so uh, like it you know like I said that this like I said it's a power kind of a powerful brand of cigar um, this cigar I don't know it's roughly 40 or more years old at the time of filming here so um, there's one thing to note too that, that when you wrap foil around these cigars and there's going to be another paper inside this thing it really I think helps to slow down the aging process on this thing so the cigars age quite slowly because there's really nowhere for anything to escape between being wrapped up in this foil and then being in that coffin as well so it's going to be kind of interesting as um, <clears throat> you know we get further into the cigar and then I start to smoke the cigar how strong the cigar is really going to be so it's going to be kind of interesting to see that but here I am uh, pulling the foil off of here and right about oh, a little bit further down there starts to be a really heavy barnyard um, aroma that starts to be coming on that starts to come off of the cigar roughly right about now just really and then once I get the cigar completely unwrapped you're gonna see the paper that's wrapped around the cigar that's slowly starting to appear as I peel the foil off here from the cigar once I got the cigar pretty much fully exposed to the air the barnyard smell was extremely intense on this cigar so I could just imagine what these cigars were like 40 years ago when they rolled them up it must have been just full of just uh, lots and lots of uh, oils and and just tannins in this cigar because um, and like I said 40 years later you can still smell a quite prevalent barnyard aroma off of this cigar so we'll see how this thing goes but here I am I'm finally getting most of the foil off I wanted to do this as good as I possibly can so that you you know for posterity reasons so that uh, down the road in the future people will be able to look at this and uh, see what these cigars were all about because there's gonna be a time where these cigars are probably gonna be non-existent or there's going to be very very few of them left in the world because they've either been smoked or they just disappeared 
So, <clears throat> anyway, all right, let's uh, get this thing back in the frame. You can see that paper in there. It, it's, I don't know, it's a paper or cloth or some kind of something in there, but it's definitely not rice paper. It's just some type of uh, paper in there. I don't know what it would be, but it, it, you know, it's wrapped around there. And here we are, finally getting that off. You can see the the wrapper on this thing is really smooth though very very smooth there's a really nice sheen to the wrapper on it especially down there um, where my left hand is to your right there's a really heavy oily sheen uh, down there on the bottom part of the cigar and it's just got a really nice Colorado brown wrapper on it but it's very oily and I just attribute that to being wrapped up in that foil for such a long period of time so that it's just really slowed the process of the aging down here so anyway now that we've given it a twirl, let's get it under the water. Okay, so we're back here with the La Cepcion Gran Ginar or Ginar, whatever way you want to call it. My Spanish isn't that good and I apologize ahead of time for not pronouncing it correctly. So. Um, Anyway, just get everything out of the way. Uh, DudeCigars.com is the aggregator for everything. And uh, Smoking Vintage Cigars over on Facebook. Go ahead and post your pictures over there. And what else? Um, subscribe over here. Uh, it, that would be greatly appreciated if you could subscribe to the channel. That way you get everything as it comes out. So, anything else? I don't know. I don't think so. So, anyway, this is a big, long commitment of a cigar. And a uh, 40-plus-year-old cigar, too. But I think I'm ready for this commitment. So I'm going to give this thing a cut and a light. So one thing to note, too, is that um, I'm kind of a wet smoker. So the tip of this cigar, since it's a long commitment on the cigar, what will happen is this will get really wet. And it'll kind of plug up. And all you have to do is you just go in there and you just snip off a little bit of the end of the cigar and it'll open it back up again so if you find you're smoking a big cigar like this and it kind of isn't drawing as well as it used to in the beginning that's probably what it is you're probably a wet smoker like me and you just need to clip off that little bit of the tip on the end here so anyway let's get this thing lit up So right out the gate, it's uh, kind of a little bit woody, like in a big way. But uh, anyway, there's no ban on this thing, so I'm going to smoke it down to here somewhere, and I'll be back with the tasting notes. Back here with the tasting notes on the La Cepcion Grand Ganar, or Grand Ganar. So like I said, it opened up with that woodiness in there, and it was fairly woody throughout the first inch of the cigar. And as it developed in the first third, the woodiness really tamped back quite a bit. And there was more of an earth, sweet, earthy retro uh, as it developed in the first third. There was a bit of a zingy, kind of a citrusy, uh, kind of a finish on the palate through the center of the tongue and on the roof of the mouth that was uh, quite short and a little bit off-putting, but uh, it was just there in the first third. As the cigar burned down through the first third into the second third, that um, sweet earthiness really ramped up quite a bit. The woodiness tamped back uh, quite a lot. And then there was also kind of a toasted tobacco in there that mixed with that sweet earthiness, which was really nice. It was a really nice, sweet, pleasant retro. The That zinginess on the palate tamped back quite a bit. The uh, finish on the palate actually became a lit, little more, a lot more, uh, kind of a richer, creamier, chewier uh, finish on the palate with almost like kind of a coffee-like finish on the palate. As the cigar burned down through the second third into the last third, that um, the woodiness actually came up and mixed quite well with that sweet earthiness and that to toasted tobacco on the retro, which was quite pleasant and quite nice. The um, That richness on the palate actually um, continued and maintained 
but there was also that, a little bit of that zinginess that came up toward the end here, uh, down the center of the tongue and the roof of the mouth. But all in all, this was a very pleasant cigar to smoke. I really enjoyed smoking this cigar. Uh, it was night and day. I've smoked another one that I humidified to 72% without the foil on there uh, in the paper. And this one I humidified to 72% with everything intact. And it was just, um, it was 180 degrees from the first one. The first one was uh, pretty one-dimensional, not that good of a cigar to smoke. This one here was really nice, uh, had some really nice flavors, some nice transitions in there, and it smoked quite nicely, uh, which for me it was, it was really good. What more can I say on that? Um, personally though, I don't really like a large format cigar. Um, I tend to prefer like a Corona Gorda or a, Lan or a Lancero or a uh, Lonsdale. Uh, those cigars for me, or even a Petit Corona, uh, those tend to have a lot uh, more consistent smoke production throughout the entire cigar. Uh, the smoke production on a larger format cigar tends to be a little bit wanting in the beginning and then as the cigar opens up uh, it tends to produce more smoke until it gets down to the end where it starts to produce consistent, some consistent amounts of smoke. That's just me. That's my opinion. I'm just some knucklehead on the internet. Uh, strength wise, first cigar of the day, not punchy at all. Really after 40 years that nicotine is pretty much non-existent in there. Um, Body-wise, it was a full-bodied cigar, but <clears throat> you definitely would need to retro this cigar to really appreciate all the flavors that were in there on this cigar. If you're not retroing the cigar, you're, it's going to leave you wanting and you're going to be wondering what the big deal is about the cigar. That's just another opinion of mine. Um, and like I said, body-wise, it was a full-bodied cigar. Um, I have to give this thing a CA rating right now of around 96 about nine and a half smoke rings. This cigar was definitely a pleasant surprise for me, especially after smoking the first cigar and then smoking this one. Um, it was like night and day and I really enjoyed it. If you have a chance to pick up some of these cigars from the 70s, I'd say go for it. I think you'd be uh, pleasantly surprised by this cigar. Anyway, I've rambled on enough and that's enough out of me.